Now we're going to switch over to early English wooden dolls, in which Estelle has a very nice selection in her collection. And I picked these two because I think they have different type of things to feature. Number one, the little baby with its little original costume and very, very simply made, just muslin rolled fabric for the arms, very crudely shaped feet, very, very simple costume, but original painting, original face. And I think a child would find this the most endearing doll. And the baby is resting in its wrought iron brass hand cast bed. Along with mother, and mother has, I'm going to see if I can show you by taking the tag off here, because I want you to be sure to see this. Please look at her kid arms, which are blue. She has blue gloves on, which are forming her hands, but they're designed to be gloves which accentuate her gown. And she has wonderful enamel inset eyes, not the painted eyes. And then on top of her embroidered coif, which matches her sleevelets and her fichu or shawl, she has this extraordinary cap, which is a woven cap underneath and completely covered with, I haven't decided what they are, like little tips of nuts, little tips of acorns. It's a, just an absolutely extraordinary hat, very, very firm-sided, and imagine to have been preserved all of these years. Okay, and another favorite of mine, I guess I'm picking out wonderful things that I found specially um, loving to me from Estelle's collection, is this carved wooden doll from the region, we know because it is on her base, Schwaben, which is a suburb of Munich, and she's wearing a regional costume from that time period. Now first I'm going to show you the carving of her hair. I'm going to turn this around so you can see the detail of the double ringlet braids, the elaborate ringlet curls, hanging down, then the smooth pate at the back of the head, and then the pattern created at this side and accentuated by her very demure posed face to the right. Beautiful hand painting, wonderful regional costume that is totally original, including my favorites, the leather satchel that is hand painted with the date 1827 written on it, and this extraordinary lidded basket with the lid that actually hinges open and has the most beautifully designed woven and painted colors on it. Now I would like to share with you some of the wonderful early German dolls, German wooden dolls from the Estelle Johnston collection. Very, very fine examples and almost impossible to find today, especially with the original finish that hers still maintain. This is the earliest one and it's probably um, late 1700s. It, does, it is dated on the leg um, of the doll, and, but it is pencil dated so we're not exactly sure that's totally correct. Um, but it definitely is 18th century. And watch, I'm going to turn this around, and you're going to see, first, notice the profile of the doll. That very, very elegant, aristocratic profile. And then cast your eyes looking at the detail of the hair and how it is sculpted all the way around. And I'll turn it up in a minute so you can actually see the top of the hair and see that that deep sculpting extends all the way around. There's the side, and then here is the crown. Sculpted ears with blushing, and coming to the face itself, we're seeing this unbelievable painting of the ringlet curls around the face, beautifully shaped nose, just wonderful wide eyes, very, very beautiful. Her torso is has sculpted to have a good shape to it. She has elongated limbs. She has wonderfully painted green shoes. And her costume is of the finest silk with very, very dainty, cruel embroidery. And she owns, along with it, a green silk feathered bonnet and a green silk coat, sleeve, there are sleeves on the coat. And she is preserved for all time in this extraordinary hand-painted and hand-decorated early cardboard box. An absolutely true treasure. Uh, this doll was actually shown in Coleman's Encyclopedia. If any of you wanted to look for it there, you could find it. Another very early wooden doll 
is a much smaller sister, but notice she has the same shaped feet with those very slender, elongated feet and the hand-painted shoes, and I might point out a very shapely leg for such a little doll. And once again, I'm going to turn the profile and you can look again and you'll see you have the same shape of the face with that very um, strong temple line and nose. Painted hair close to the head, no, no sculpting detail on this one. Simply painted but with beautiful feathering around the front of the face and the sculpted ears with piercing and wearing her original gown with fully articulated joints. A wonderful, good early treasure doll. Now a little bit later, going into like the 1820 to 1830 period in Germany, um, we have two other wonderful examples of the dolls that were made um, in the Grodner Tall area. And this one having the famous, what is known as tuck comb. But I want to point out to you that this sculpted tuck comb is not simple like the, the later uh, mass assembly ones that were made. This has wonderful details of the arch sculpting at the top of the comb. Very, very beautifully painted um, yellow banding the black of the, of the actual comb itself. The painted hair has extraordinary shading and curlicules around the face, which is a very, very finely modeled heart-shaped face with a nice little pointed chin to match the pointed nose. Original painting on the face with um, the original lacquer varnish over the top of it, fully sculpted and uh, fully articulated rather on her wooden body and nice little painted green shoes and a beautiful antique silk costume. Pierced ears once again. Another example, this one is also shown in Coleman's Encyclopedia that Estelle was happily shared a photograph with them. And this one is wearing her wonderful original costume. I'm going to turn it around so you can see it very carefully from all angles. But one of the things I want to point out to you at first of all is she has a fully wooden articulated body, but she also has a little added feature of the fingerless kid gloves that are actually attached to her arm and extend all the way to the elbows. And do look at her wonderful attached stockings with the ties going all the way up and the little uh, leatherette slippers with silk ribbons. And here she goes. Notice the hair comb in the back. Her original wig. And if you notice, she has flowers in her hair that match the little corsage around the sash of her silk apron. Very, very beautiful doll. She has original, uh, not original, she has age crackle air across her face, horizontal lines of crackle air. But as I pointed out once again, don't we all? And we're not nearly as old as she is. And then one other example, because the Grodner Tall doll continued to be made and, and made in all varieties and made up really until the end of the 19th century, perhaps even beyond, Here's a little example of one of the Grodner Tall dolls that was made and marketed in France along the seaside where she was given a costume entirely made of colored shells and hand painted and decorated. While the wooden dolls were being made, the market for the development of the paper mache dolls was also happening. And this was a, it's a very, very complicated story and a lot of research is starting to be done about it now and thankfully so. Uh, Mary Ann Seeslick in Germany is working, has discovered some amazing things about the early paper mache industry and it's one of these things that the more you find, the more you realize how much we don't know, but also we're handicapped because there are not that many wonderful examples of these early paper mache dolls for people to find. Luckily Estelle appreciated these early on and she has some wonderful examples for us. This one is probably my favorite in her collection. This one is shown in the Christina Grafnitz book on paper mache dolls. You perhaps have seen photographs of it there. Um, oh, she's got a blue ribbon from 1983 in San Diego. At any rate, please look at her. Notice she has, if I tuck her, pull her dress down slightly, you can see that she has molded bosom. She has this very, very strong, elongated throat, very, very beautifully done. And please, again, if I turn her around, look at the profile of her face. 
that beautifully shaped nose. Wonderful ringlet curls at the side. Her hair is a very unusual color, not black, more like a dark, dark midnight brown. And then decorating the comb, decorating this coronet of braid at the top of her hair is a very unusual decorative comb that you can actually see the tines of the fork of the comb coming down into her hair. Not the same type of thing as the Grodnitral tuck comb at all. And at the front, decorated with little curls and little gold leaf. A very, very exquisite example of an early paper mache doll. Now from her same time period, perhaps just slightly later, is another lady, and she has really rare points because she has now, not painted eyes, but she has the enamel eyes. And she has the wonderful sculpted hair again, but look what is added to it. Original human hair or, or mohair or floss curls added to the front of the face in little ringlet curls with a little comb there and a little braided coronet at the back. So doll makers trying to decide on finding different ways to make their product unique and different and very, very special. And I'd probably point out, probably quite expensive at the time. There's the sculpted hair and the added real hair. And an incredible costume. Once again, Estelle always on the lookout for the finest originality in costumes that both of these dolls had. This was a little doll from Estelle's collection. At a first glance, you don't pay too much attention to it. And then when you pick it up, it's really quite remarkable because she has these very, very different kind of loosely jointed original legs with stockings and painted yellow slippers. And she's wearing her original costume. And when we take her bonnet off, you're going to see that what at first appears as though she's going to have painted hair, she actually has the painted black paint at her, the top of her head. She has the slit at the top of her head in which the hair is inserted. And then look at this wonderful original coiffure, which still is on this lady. And finally, just to top her off, she is holding her own little original baby in its own original swaddling or toppling clothes. A very, very wonderful early doll. And even novelties were starting to be made in this period. This is a paper mache lady, you think. In fact, she does indeed even have little feet sticking out at the bottom. But what she is, is a sewing companion. You would have her on your wrist or you're hanging from a little knob next to your working chair. She has little carved wooden hands that are original and when you turn her around, the back of her dress opens and inside you find various little sewing novelties, um, a little scissors, a thimble, little, a little sewing box of little treasures. And she was your sewing companion doll with a rare sculpted hairdo again. And as Estelle looked for dolls in their original costumes, here is a wonderful gentleman. This is, I don't know if he's a bespoken gentleman or just a little boy going to school, but he's definitely a scholar. And he has the hair looped down over in front of his ears, very, very fine, and his original scholar's costume with cap. There were so many extraordinary paper mache dolls. I'm going to just show you briefly and not talk too much, a few other examples. We showed you a minute ago a little shell doll made of wood with a shell costume. Here we have a paper mache doll who is entirely costumed in little miniature shells. And if you could play one of these jelly bean games with this doll, you know, count the jelly beans in the bowl. Well, if you counted the shells that are on this costume, you'd be counting for hours because on the whole puck of the sleeves, every one of these little pieces is a little tiny, tiny shell extraordinary to find and beautifully, beautifully preserved. We have here a couple. Um, Estelle always believed they were a couple, and I will, now I'll tell you a story. Well, first of all, the gentleman, and he is carrying with him his little book full of costumes, regional costumes of Switzerland, which he owns, 
and he is wearing an original costume of Switzerland. And please look at him, look at the sculpting of that hair. I want you to look at his sideburns when I turn him around. Notice the embroidered leatherette suspenders. And now look at the sideburns. This hair is not flat and just painted. It has great, great sculpting detail. It's just absolutely wonderful. And here he comes around the back. Has brown painted eyes too, which are a little harder to find. And a very serious expression. Now this girl we catalog as wearing a traditional costume of Switzerland. And I received an email this morning because our catalog had just gone online and someone wrote to me and I think she's probably right and said, Florence, I, I collect only folklore dolls and so I know this costume and it is from um, an area of Germany near Freiburg, a very, very specific area because she said, I know no other region which has this particular hat with the little red balls on the top. So the quest for research is open and it always is and I appreciate her letting me know that. Very, very beautiful costume and when I turn her to the side, please again, We've been talking about the costume, but look at her face. Look at that hair. Look at the, the beautiful little elegant line of her nose. Very, very fine to see that. 